How's it going, everybody? It's Roger, back from Arcane Labs, uh, with, you guessed it, Core 2021 Booster Box. Uh, we're going to open this bad boy, and we're going to see what we get. Hopefully we get something good. I've been a little disappointed recently. Had a couple good promo packs. But I opened a collector um, booster pack earlier. Wasn't that great? What's more fun than cracking packs? All right, in the comments below the video, I just want you guys to put the best pack you've ever opened. All right, let's get to it. Pack number one. Okay, let's take a look. Spined Megalodon. Goblin Wizardry. I'm going to go through the uh, commons pretty quickly. And, um, you know, we'll go through the uncommons and the rares a little bit slower. Actually, let's do this. Pestilence Haze. Uh, one and two black. All creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. Uh, or you can remove two loyalty counters from each planeswalker. It's a pretty cool card. Uh, Chrome Replicator for five colorless. When Chrome Replicator enters the battlefield, if you control two or more non-land, non-token permanents with the same name as one another, create a 4-4 colorless construct artifact creature. Eh. Carrion Grub. It gets plus X plus zero, where X is the greatest power among creature cards in your graveyard. When it enters the battlefield, mill four cards. It's pretty cool. Ooh, Sublime Epiphany. I really wanted this card. Uh, this card is great. I mean, you could choose one or more. You could do all, you could do all modes. Number one, uh, counter target spell. Number two, counter target activated or triggered ability. Number three, return target non land permanent to its owner's hand. Um... Or you could create a token that's a copy of a target creature you control. Uh, and then target player draws a card. There's a lot of things you can do with this card. Uh, you can go infinite with it. You can draw your deck with it. Uh, you can bounce everything with it. Uh, it's a really, really cool card. And uh, makeshift battalion. Okay. And a cool island. All right, one down. Okay. Let me go through the commons pretty quick. All right, <clears throat> unleashed fury. That's going to go well uh, with uh, Feather, Fe Feather the Redeemed, if you guys didn't know. Uh, Vryn Wingmire, non-creature spells cost one more to cast. Those of you that like the stacks kind of strategy. Soul Seer, for two and a red, Soul Seer deals five damage to target creature or Planeswalker. That permanent loses indestructible until end of turn. That's going to be good in standard, for sure. Ooh. Conspicuous Snoop. Play with the top card of your library revealed. You may cast goblin spells from the top of your library. As long as the top card of your library is a goblin card, Conspicuous Scoop, uh, Snoop sorry, has all activated abilities of that card. That's pretty cool. And another foil, Volcanic Geyser. X damage to any target. All right. Uh, another Megalodon. Get through the commons. All 
Alright. Light of Promise. Chant creature has whenever you gain life, you uh, may put that many plus one plus one counters on this creature. Warden of the Woods has Vigilance. Whenever Warden of the Woods becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you may draw two cards. Eliminate. For one in a black, destroy. Target creature or planeswalker with convert mana cost three or less. Shacklegeist. One in a blue. You can block only creatures with flying. And you could tap two, untap spirit you control to tap target creature you don't control. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Mind rot. I used to like that card a lot. It's actually pretty good in standard. <laughs> Ruin people's hands with that. And and duress. Alright, the Sanctum of Shattered Heights. Of the shrine. Talked about shrines in an earlier video. Uh, so, for one, uh, you can discard a land card or a shrine card. Sanctum of Shattered Heights deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker, where X is the number of shrines you control. Arc Fiend Vessel. It's got lifelink for one black. That's a 1-1. One, one. When it enters the battlefield, if it entered from your graveyard, or you cast it from your graveyard, exile it. If you do, create a 5-5 five, five black demon creature token with flying. That could be abused. Bolt Hound. Haste. Whenever he attacks, another creature you control is plus one plus zero until end of turn. And then Rada, Heart of Keld. A lot of people using uh, her to build uh, new commander decks. She's uh, one, uh, red and a green, as long as it's your turn. Rada, Heart of, uh, of Keld, has First Strike. You can look at the top card of your library any time. You may play lands from the top of your library. And for four, a red and a green, she gets plus X, plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of lands you control. You can do some massive commander damage with her. I really wish they didn't print these crappy lands, these tap lands where you gain a life. Wizards, we need fetches. Reprint the fetches. All right, anyway. Uh, secure the scene. Cancel. Uh, let's get to them. And boom. Bad deal. Draw two cards. Each opponent discards two cards. Each player loses two life. Uh, Gormand is an additional cost to cast a spell and sacrifice a creature. It's got flying and trample. When he enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a creature. This guy's interesting. Uh, Avon Gaggle Master, flying. When he enters the battlefield, you gain two life for each creature you control with flying. So we'll put those in the uncommon pile. Looks like a foil mountain behind there. Uh, Speaker of the Heavens, for one white, you get a human cleric creature with vigilance and lifelink. It's a 1 1. You can tap it to create a 4 4 white angel creature token with flying. You can activate this ability only if you have at least 7 life more than your starting life total. And only any time you can cast a sorcery. Uh, if you have that strategy, like a life gain strategy, it's really easy to have seven life more than your starting life total. And for one white, just being able to tap it to create a 4-4 four, four flying angel, that's pretty good. Uh, nice foil mountain. All right. Happen there. Chandra's Praline. Uh, 
We went over that earlier. When a sorcerer control deals non combat damage to an opponent, Chandra's Praline gets plus one plus zero and gains double strike until end of turn. Uh, Pestilent Haze. For one and two black, you can choose one. All creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. And remo or remove two loyalty counters from each planeswalker. Already got that. Faith's Fetters. Enchant Permanent. When Faith's Fetters enters the battlefield, you gain four life. Enchanted Permanent can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. Double Vision. I really like Double Vision. Um, you just the first instant of sorcery spell you cast each turn, you can just copy it. It's really cool. And a cool forest. Onaki Ogre. All right. Let's get to the goods. Let's get to the good stuff. Let's get some good stuff, shall we? All right. Griffin Airy. At the beginning of your end step, if you gain three or more life this turn, create a 2-2 two -two white Griffin creature token with flying. Uh, Kytale Freebooter. You guys all remember Kite Sail Freebooter from Ixalan. Uh, Silver's Moat Ghoul. At the beginning of your end step, if you gain three or more life this turn, return Silver's Moat Ghoul from your graveyard to the battlefield tap. For one in the black, you can sacrifice it to draw a card. Heroic Intervention. Looks like a great card. Uh, the price in this card was going way up. Uh, thanks to this reprint, it came down a little bit. Uh, not as much as I'd like it to, but hey, I got one now. Uh, I didn't before, believe it or not. For one in a green, permanent you control gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Very powerful. Infernal scarring. Foil. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus zero, and has. When this creature dies, draw a card. No Teferi yet. No Grim Tutor. No Ugin. No uh, fiery emancipation. No Chandra. All right, Hobble Fiend. Look, I feel I feel like the Chandra's in this one. <laughs> no. Meteorite. I don't like this card at all. Cost five. There's two damage to any target, and then you can tap to add one mana of any color. Pestilent Haze again. Get out of focus there. Ooh. Berries Sol... Oh, I'm sorry. Basri's Solidarity. One one card on each creature you control. Garrick. Garrick Unleashed. So Garrick's really cool. Uh, for two and two green, you can plus one him. He comes in with four loyalty, by the way. Plus one. Uh, up to one target creature gets plus three, plus three, and gains trample until end of turn. Uh, for minus two, you can create a three, three beast to, uh, beast creature token. Then, if an opponent controls more creatures than you, put a loyalty counter on on Garrick Unleashed. And the minus seven, his ultimate, uh, you get an emblem. Where at the beginning of your end step, you can search your library for a creature card, put it onto the battlefield, and then shuffle your library. That's bananas. B A N A N. A S. I'm excited about that. Garrick is just a, such a good character from Magic. Most of the Garrick Planeswalker cards are very strong. Uh, all right. First uncommon, Skyway Sniper for a green. It's a 1 2 with reach. You can deal 1 damage to a target creature with flying for 2 in the green. Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest. Uh, another shrine at the beginning of your pre combat main phase. Add X mana of any one color where X is the number of shrines you control. <clears throat> Looks like Wizards is trying to bring shrines back. There's not enough yet, though. I don't think. There's only 10. Uh, is there 10? 
I don't know, correct me in the comments below if I'm wrong, but I think this 10. Uh, lower scale, classic. I mean, whenever you draw a card, put a 1-1 one -one counter on him. And ooh, Basri's Lieutenant, uh, Vigilance, Protection from Multicolored. Uh, when Basri's Lieutenant enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one -one counter on target creature you control. Uh, when he or another creature you control dies, if it had a 1-1 one -one counter on it, create a 2-2 two -two White Knight creature token with Vigilance. Those of you that have Knight decks, that'd be pretty cool. And uh, Crabby Land. All right. So far, so good, I think. Uh, Lofty did the Denial. Just want to talk about that for a minute. So one of my earlier videos, I opened a pack. I uh, just kind of skipped past Lofty Denial, not really <clears throat> even realizing um, how good it actually is, especially if you're going to use it in standard. For one in a blue, um, you know, counter target spell unless control pays one. You know, if you counter a uh, creature with flying, Kind of that spell, unless its control pays four instead. It's not bad. All right. Can it be Stalker? For three and a green, can it be Stalker? Must be blocked if able. When he dies, you gain one life for each creature that died this turn. Uh, another eliminate. Tolarian Kraken. Whenever you draw a card, you may pay one. When you do, you may tap or untap target creature. That's pretty cool. Nope. Care of it. The spiteful. Other creatures get minus one, minus one. See you later, tokens. And a cool looking planes. Secure the scene. Palladium mirror. A little bit of ramp. For three, you get an artifact creature mirror. You can tap to add two colorless. Uh, Siege striker for two and a white. It's a human soldier creature with double strike. When he attacks, you can tap any number of untapped creatures you control, and then he gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each creature tapped this way. Volcanic Geyser, again. Azusa. All right. I got two Azusa so far in the last week or so. And foil forest. Foil forest. Run, Forrest, run! Let's get through him. Frost Breath. Planet War Visionary. I'm actually going to just set that one over here because I have a place for that, actually. Okay. There we go. Skyway Sniper again. Battle Rattle Shaman. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may have target creature get plus two, plus zero until end of turn. Waker of Waves. For seven, creatures your opponent's control get minus one, minus zero. For one and a blue, you can discard Waker of Waves. Look at the top two cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard. It's actually a good card. I mean, tough to cast unless you cheat it. I mean, I mean you can cast it late game. But this ability, for one and a blue, you just discard it. And look at the top two of your library and put one into your hand and one in the graveyard. That's great. Little pack leader, one and a white. Other dogs, you, know, you control get plus one, plus one. Whenever pack leader attacks, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn to dogs you control.
Okay, another lofty denial. Oh, the old Titanic growth. See this card real quick, Village Rice. Uh, for one black, and as an additional cost to cast a spell, you can sack a creature, but you draw two cards. All right, so with the right, with the right strategy, where you want to sack creatures, this card's great. All right, Vryn Wingmare. For two and a white flying, non-creature spells uh, cost one more to cast. Oh, nice rewind. I always like this card. Uh, two and two, blue for four. You can just counter target spell, but then you get to untap four lands, up to four lands. Leafkin Avenger for two, a red and a green. Uh, tap to add a green for each creature you control, a power four greater. Or for seven and a red, uh, it deals damage equal to its power to target uh, player or planeswalker. Oh, conspicuous Snoop again. Hell Kite Punisher. Four, seven. It's flying. And it gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn when you pay red. Jeskai Elder. For one and a blue, he's got prowess. <clears throat> so whenever you cast a non creature spell, creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Um, when Jeskai Elder deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. Kinetic Augur. For three and a red, human shaman creature with trample. Uh, its power is equal to the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. When it enters the battlefield, discard up to two cards and then draw that many cards. It's pretty cool. Uh, Ruined Halo. Enters the battlefield, choose a card name. Creatures you control have protection, or you have protection from the chosen card name. Uhugin the Spirit Dragon. That was pretty cool. I had the rare, and then the mythic foil Ugin. Okay. Okay. Now the box is really shaping up. <clears throat> Real quick, let's just check something out here. So, on TCG... It's like 30 bucks. That's a good card. I mean, obviously, it's a good card. It's Ugin, Spirit Dragon. <clears throat> it's a game changer. All right. Chrome Replicator. Maybe we went over that earlier, I'm not sure. But when it enters the battlefield, if you control... Yes, we did go over that one earlier. Griffin Airy. Quirion Dryad. Speaker of the Heavens. Went over that one too. I like that card. Okay. Now all we need is a Teferi. Another Shrine. Ooh, the Indulging Patrician. Patrician? Okay, yeah, for one, a white and a black. It's a vampire noble creature, flying, lifelink. At the beginning of your end step, if you gained three or more life this turn, each opponent loses three life. I like it. I like it a lot. Seasoned Hollow Blade. Discard a card, tap it, and it gains indestructible. Jorel. 
You guys should all know what that does. Uh, whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a 2-2 two, two green cat creature token. Uh, for 4 and 2 green until end of turn, creatures you control have base power and toughness uh, XX, where X is the number of cards you control. Um, I don't know if you guys watch uh, the Command Zone. Uh, watched the recent episode and where Jimmy was using this as his commander. And the deck played really cool. I really liked it a lot. And um, I thought it looked fun. So I'm probably going to try to to build something. Not quite the way he built it. A little bit different, but similar. Uh, Wishcoin Crab. Wishcoin Crab. Gut Crabs. Okay. Invigorating Surge for two in a green. Put a 1-1 counter on target creature you control. Then double the number of 1-1 counters on that creature. Hmm. That's actually a crazy card uh, in certain decks. Um, like Animar, for example. I have an Animar deck um, where the strategy is just you know, ramp, ramp, ramp in the beginning. Hopefully you get your small creatures, play them. You know, build Animar up a little bit. And then just cast humongous Hydras. Eldrazi. You know, just doubling the amount of 1-1 one -one counters on a Hydra. Depending on which one it was. Any, I mean, it's devastating. It's devastating. We'll leave it at that. Jeskai Elder, again. Tide Skimmer. Whenever you attack with two of our creatures with flying, you get to draw a card. I don't know, Teferi's Ageless Insight. Um, I like this card. For two and two blue, if you draw a card except the first one you draw each turn, um, or each of your draw steps, draw two cards instead. All right, so if you have a card that says draw two cards, you draw four cards. That's badass. Cast for a blue counter target instant or sorcery spell and lets this controller pace three. Love this card. It's a blue. Thralling hold, enchant creature. Uh, you can't choose an untapped creature as this spell's target as you cast it. You control the enchanted creature. Wildwood Scourge. Fabled Passage. Pretty good land tap. Sacrifice Fable Passage. Search your library for a basic land card. Put it into the battlefield tap. Then shuffle your library. And if you control four or more lands, untap that land. It's a good land. Oops, sorry. To the Uncommons, Kind Sail, Fire Booter, again. Heart, Fire, Immolator. Did I read that one yet? Uh, for one in a red, Prowess, plus one, plus one till end of turn. I want to cast a non creature spell. And for a red, you can sacrifice it and it deals damage equal to its power to target a creature or planeswalker. Twin Blade Assassin. Uh, for three, a black and a green. At the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, draw a card. Another Ugin. It's not foil, but it's still another Ugin. Get out of here. Okay. <laughs> Two Ugins. Tugin.
All right, two Ugans in the box. Probably not going to have it to Fairy. I also got a Garrett. Also, the Planeswalker, the Mythic Planeswalker. <clears throat> so probably not going to see to Fairy in this box. Uh, Feet of Resistance. Okay, let's just let's just stop at the good stuff, shall we? Bad deal. Fierce Empath is an awesome card. Soul Seer. Actually, let me read this to you if you guys don't know what Fierce Empath does. Uh, for two and a green, when it enters the battlefield, you can search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost six or greater. Reveal it, shuffle it, uh, reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle your library. Uh, Soul Seer again. Temple of Epiphany. Skyland, and then a foil Bloodfell Caves. Oh, what am I doing? There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's just get through these. Video is a little bit longer than I, I thought it was going to be originally. All right, Light of Promise for two and a white enchant creature. Whenever you gain life without any little one counters, you already have that. Uliana's Devotee. Zombies you control get plus one plus zero at the beginning of your end step. If a creature died this turn, you may pay one in a black. If you do, create a 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token. Thrashing Brontodon, we all know what he does. You can pay one, sacrifice him to destroy an artifact or an enchantment. He's a 3-4. Okay, Spore Web Weaver. For a 2 and a green. Reach and Hexproof from blue. Whenever it's uh, Spore Web Weaver is dealt damage, you gain one life and create a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token. Veteran. White and attack, put a 1-1 counter on target creature with a 1-1 counter on it. For 4 and 2 white tap, put a 1-1 counter on target creature. That's not that good. Uh, Waker of Waves again. Uh, Avon Gaggle Master. Volcanic Salvo. Uh, for 10 and 2 red. But this spell costs X less to cast, where X is the total power of creatures you control. It deals six damage to each of up to two target creatures and or planeswalkers. So you can get rid of some uh, pretty big threats with the volcanic salvo. Invigorating Surge. I already went through that one. Selfless Savior. I like this card for a white. You can sacrifice it, and another target creature you control gains indestructible until end of turn. Gormand. Again. Primal Might. Cool card. X and a green. Target creature you control gets plus X plus X until end of turn, and then it fights up to one target creature you don't control. Crash through. Witch's Cauldron. Four a black. You can pay one in a black and sacrifice a creature and then gain one life and draw a card. Hellkite Punisher. I already went through that. 
Watro Spheres for a uh, white and a blue. Uh, it's got flying. It's a 2 2 bird wizard. And creatures balance with flying that you cast cost one less to cast. Whenever another creature with flying enters the battlefield under your control, Watcher of Spheres gets plus one plus one until end of turn. And Thieves Guild Enforcer for a black human rogue creature with flash. It's a 1 1. Uh, when it or another rogue enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent mills two cards. As long as an, op an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, uh, Thieves Guild Enforcer gets plus two, plus one, and has Death Touch. Uh, Wizards is really, really pushing the, the mill the mill effects in this set. Tavern Swindler. Oh, all right. Two Ugin so far. I can't believe it. No Teferi, though. No Teferi. Until... I doubt it's in this pack. There we go. What's going on with this? I seem like I'm so close. All right. Falconer Adept. Whenever it attacks, create a 1-1 one, one white bird creature token with flying. That's tapped and attacking. Oh, nice cultivate. I wish it was the the full the full art or cultivate, but a watcher of spheres again. Temple of Melody, another Scryland. All right, unsubstantiate. Return target spell or creature to its owner's hand. Uh, epitaph golem. For two, you can put target card from your graveyard on the bottom of your library. Shipwreck dowser. Dozer, dowser. Uh, prowess, when it enters the battlefield, return target instant or sorcery from your graveyard to your hand. Necromentia and the cool land. All right, moment. Of, no, no, we still got some. Oops, sorry, hit the camera there. Jeez. King Guildmaster. Sanctum of Stone Fangs. Oh, another shrine. I think I got the blue, red, green, and black shrine so far. I'm not sure. I'll have to go back and look. But at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is the number of shrines you control. Tempered Veteran. Went over that already. All right. Barrel Fist Oak. Whenever you draw a card... Breakfast Oak gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Nine lives. Uh, hexproof. If a source would deal damage to you, prevent that damage, and put an incarnation counter on nine lives. When there are nine or more incarnation counters on nine lives, exile it. When it leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. So yeah, so I'll play it. You'll give it to some opponent somehow. Harmless offering, maybe. And then bounce it. They lose. Oh, scavenging ooze. Oops, wrong pile. Sorry about that. Scavenging ooze. Okay, the full art. Full card art there. Very nice. Ever open a pack and just know there's a foil feels a little bit thicker i feel like there is Let's see if i'm right
Cultivate. Carrion Grub. Teferi's Tutelage. Temple of Triumph. Oh, no foil. Huh. Felt thicker. Actually a cool looking token. Alright, let's just get rid of the box here. Hang on. Hang on a second. Sorry guys. Okay, there's more packs in here than I thought. Alright. We have one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight left. All right, let's go. Will I get another Ugin? Will we? Probably not. No one's that lucky. Fungal Rebirth. For two and a green, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. If a creature died this turn, create two 1-1 one, one green sapling creature tokens. Angelic Ascension. For one and a white, exile target creature of Planeswalkers. Controller creates a 4-4 four, four white angel creature token with flying. Could be good. It's not bad. I mean, instant speed. Oh, very low mana cost to cast, but they get a 4-4 four, four white uh, flying angel. Which... I mean, it's not bad, right? It could be great depending on what you what you blow up. But lore scale again, I like that card though a lot. The Sanctum of All, Legendary Shrine. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may search your library and/or graveyard for a shrine card. Put that card onto the battlefield. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. If an ability of another shrine you control triggers while well, you have six or more shrines, that ability triggers an additional time. Okay, oh, cat token. Love that guy. Experimental Overload. Uh, create X or create an XX blue and red weird creature token where X is the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. Then you may return an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Exile Experimental Overload. Dormwatch Crypt. Zero cost. You can tap and sack it. Exile all cards from target player's graveyard. For all of your friends in your playgroup that have a graveyard strategy. They're going to love this card. <laughs> riddle form. Okay, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you may have Riddle form become a 3-3 three, three Sphinx creature token with flying, in addition to its other types until end of turn, and you can just pay two in the blue to scry one. Uh, appear into the Abyss. I actually opened one of these in an earlier video. Um, target player draws cards equal to half the number of cards in their library and then loses half their life rounded up each time. Falconer Adept is a foil. And a uh, cool looking swamp there. I like that. I like that. Okay, frantic inventory. Yada, yada, yada. Blah, zay, blah. Got a spot for you. Duress. Okay, so I'm going to rebirth again. Angelic Ascension. Dire Fleet Warmonger. For one, a black and a red at the beginning of your, uh, at the beginning of combat. On your turn, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do, Dire Fleet Warmonger gets plus two, plus two, and gains trample until end of turn. 
Ghostly Pilfer. Uh, when it becomes untapped, you can pay two if you do draw a card. Whenever an opponent casts a spell from anywhere other than their hand, draw a card. Discard a card, and then you can't be blocked this turn. Okay, let's go through it. Get through the, the commons. Tavern Swindler. Okay, Reign of Revelation. Draw three cards and then discard a card. It's not that bad. I mean, it's only four mana. Havoc Jester. For four and a red, whenever you sacrifice a permanent, it deals one damage to any target. They do have a spot for this little devil. Massacre Worm. Okay. Love this guy. Three, three black. When he enters the battlefield, creatures your opponent's control get minus two, minus two until the end of turn. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, that player loses two life. The worm is a beast. Well, he's really a worm. But you know what I mean. Okay. Okay. Another crypt. Furious Rise, the beginning of your end step. If you control a creature with power four or greater, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card until you exile another card with uh, Furious Rise. Quarian Dryad. Gadrick, the Crown Scourge, for two and a red. Uh, it's a dragon with flying, obviously. Uh, when he, he, can't, he can't attack unless you control four or more artifacts. But at the beginning of your end step, you can create a treasure token for each non-token creature that died this turn. So. Ooh, and then a foil, ghostly pilfer. Three left, folks. Three left. I hope you enjoyed watching as much as I enjoyed opening them. Probably not. But, hey, still fun. All right, let's get through them, get through them. Falconer Adept. Conclave Mentor. For a green and a white, if one or more 1-1 one -one counters would be put on a creature you control, that many 1-1 one -one counters are uh, plus one are put on that creature instead. Uh, and when it dies, you gain life equal to its power. All right. Malefic Sith. And when it enters the, battle, it enters the battlefield with a soul counter on it, an equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each soul counter. Uh, whenever a creature dies, put a soul counter on Malefic Sith. I think that's how you say it. I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> if I'm not, please correct me in the comments below, guys. And one for the equip cost. Uh, another Jorial. Okay. Down to the last two. I mean, I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty happy with the two Ugans, one being foil. Okay. Unsubstantiate, return target, spell a creature to its owner's hand. Bolt Hound, for two and a red has haste. Uh, whenever Bolt Hound attacks, another creature you control gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Uh, Bastry Solidarity, another 1-1 one, one counter each creature you control. Ooh. Another Fabled Passage. And the last pack. 
Okay. Let's see what's in the last pack. Hmm. Okay, let's get through the let's get through the comms. Experimental Overload. Talarian Kraken. Battle Rattle Shaman. And? Ah, uh, Necromancia. Okay. And a foil Pride Milken. Each creature you control the one counter. That's trample. That's pretty cool. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. Uh, real quick, just go through uh, the rares with you guys one more time. Uh, Ugin, foil. Ugin, non-foil. Uh, Thieves Guild Enforcer. Volcanic Salvo. Spore Web Weaver, Temple of Epiphany, Fabled Passage, Teferi's Angel's Insight, Joriel, Rune Halo, Conspicuous Snoop, Pack Leader, Garbeck the Spiteful. Basri's Lieutenant, Double Vision, Shacklegeist, another Conspicuous Snoop, a Sublime Epiphany, Heroic Intervention, Primal Might, Rada, Heart of Keld, Speaker of the Heavens, Speaker of the Heavens, Garrick Unleashed, Azusa Lost But Seeking, Necromentia, Fabled Passage, Joriel, Ghostly Pilfer, Gadget, The Crown Scourge, Massacre Warm. Ghostly Pilfer. Again. Peer into the Abyss. That art is creepy. I like it. Sanctum of All. Temple of Triumph. Scavenging Ooze. Nine Lives. Necromentia and the Temple of Malady. And there you have it, guys. Those are the rares I got. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think the box was good? Do you think the box was bad? Um, I mean, my opinion, I, I, I'm I happy. I mean, I'm actually, I like that. I mean, the lands are cool to have. They're not the best lands, though. I like that. I really like the Fabled Passage lands. Zeus is great. Garrick is great. Uh, Primal Might is a good card. Heroic Intervention. Sublime Epiphany. Really enjoyed Double Vision. Great card. And the Dugan, the double Ugin. All right, guys. That's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think the box was good? Do you think the box was bad? Um, yeah. So do what you do. Hit that like button. Share the video with your friends. 
Uh, subscribe if you want to. I'll be doing this a lot more often. Uh, so you get, you know, you can get notified when there's a new video posted or um, see it in your feed or, you know. Anyways, guys, thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. This is Roger again from Arcane Labs, and I'm out of here.